Hello everyone. In today's internet spotlight, I'd like to do a little exploring of the Dark Meeting Research Institute. I stumbled across these guys a little while ago, I'm not sure how exactly, but I find their content quite intriguing. At first glance, it appears to be possibly a parody. There is certainly often humor in it. But they do also have some interesting ideas here. This is their uh, front page. You can visit their website by going to the Dark Meaning Research Institute dot org. Uh, so this is the welcome page. And it says, Welcome to the Dark Meaning Research Institute. All the meaning currently known to human beings accounts for just 4.9% of the total amount of meaning in the universe. The rest is what is called dark meaning, a powerful body of significant information that influences our lives but cannot be intellectually apprehended. This meaning can't be understood directly because it doesn't emit any connotations or illusions that make sense to literary critics but its existence can be inferred from the effect it has on the graspable meaning around it. When, for example, a classical interpretation of a text is distorted to the point of seeming ironic, or when a book becomes so bent that a self-reflexive value begins to emerge from it, it can be assumed that dark meaning is present and is exerting a gravitational effect on the known meaning around it. Stephen Moles first hypothesized the existence of dark meaning after noticing discrepancies in the measurements of the impact of large literary works. When he calculated the amount of influence that a major work exerts on subsequent compositions, he found that the words didn't add up. There seemed to be a huge amount of additional meaning coming from some unknown source, which determined the form that books took in the observer's mind. It was after this discovery that he made the decision to assemble a team of top literary linguistic experimenters and establish the Dark Meaning Research Institute to help bring this mysterious essence into the intelligible world. You may uh, uh, notice that they already, they, they already start to allude to other things, like for example the, the first paragraph here is written in parallel to what people often say about dark matter, which uh, I believe, according to calculations done um, regarding the amount of energy or gravity in the universe, uh, a very small amount of it is actual matter, and uh, a great percentage of it is something that is known as dark matter, something that cannot be directly observed by any instruments that, that we have or um, anything that we know of. And so this is clearly drawing from that idea to talk about uh, meaning, um, significance, and interpretation uh, that is subtle, can't be um, intellectually apprehended, but is still present. Um, I... I don't know, this entire thing might be a joke, but if it is, it's an interesting one. Um, to the right, there's a link to a YouTube video. They have a YouTube channel as well. Um, that, uh, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description so you can check it out. And here is also an illustration 
of uh, some pieces of paper. It looks like they're pages from various Shakespeare works, and they have wormholes uh, from one into the next. So the next is their areas of research, and uh, what they have here is the death of the author, other selves, the Pukarastano, word picture duality, the force of grammar, and ASMR. They, uh, they mention ASMR and they talk about it. Um, I'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, I'll just go to the first one, the death of the author. Roland Barthes famously announced the death of the author in 1967. To make it clear, there was no longer a single authority when it came to the meaning of a text. The obituary he penned contained a great deal of important information about the life of the deceased, the cause of death, and so on, but it failed to acknowledge the awkward fact that there was a cor corpse to dispose of. In the case of the dead author, a body of work and a life story are left behind, and measures have to be taken to ensure that the decomposition of one does not result in the ruination of the other. After forty-seven years, the task facing the literary undertaker seems particularly gruesome, but it has to be performed if a state of gorgeousness is to come into being. The DMRI agrees with Barth that the life story of an author should not be treated as a definitive guide to the meaning of their work, but it also thinks that when a writer gives up the ghost, their life story immediately goes from being a work of non-fiction to a work of fiction, which means it becomes a text to be compared with others as a way of generating new meaning. The Institute is committed to exploring ways that the death of the author can be used to extract dark meaning from the universe. One example is the literal death of Shakespeare, or perhaps even the literary death of Shakespeare, since almost none of the details of his life are known for certain, and as a dead author, his life story becomes just another text. The most popular version of his story begins and ends at exactly the same point, the date of his birth and death are the same, which not only reminds us that every life goes full circle, but it also gives us the opportunity to create a Shakespeare Rosenbridge by gluing the front and back pages of the Bard's complete works together. To continue reading about this subject, see paper number one. For instructions on how to make a book wormhole, click here. Uh, there are two images here at the bottom. I'm not sure what they refer to. Uh, one of them says at the top, hero and heroine, and at the bottom it says sensations of cold and smarting eyes. And then the other one sort of has the opposite. It says sensations of cold and smarting eyes first, and hero and heroine at the bottom. They reference Shakespeare a lot in their various uh, publications. Uh, they link to one of them here, paper number one. Um, if we go to their publications section, there's they have a few of them. They are published in PDF format, uh, which uh, you might be interested in checking out and reading. I've, I've read uh, all of them, and they're interesting because they it feels very much like they're trying to talk about something real, but they talk about it in clearly fictional ways. Uh, you might have noticed from, you know, the welcome screen, they, uh, they talk about um, discrepancies in the measurements of the impact of large literary works, uh, which is, of course, something that can't be measured at all. Um, in fact, none of this stuff is anything that can be measured, but they talk about it in terms of uh, this fictional scientific inquiry. Um, so it's just, it's, it's curious. Uh, let's click on the book wormhole thing. Oh, that goes to a YouTube video on how to make a book wormhole. 
Dark Meaning Researcher explains how to make a book wormhole and receive messages from your future self. And she also reveals how Shakespeare wrote about wormholes. This is on their YouTube channel, so if you'd like to check that out. There, I go to their aims section, and what they have here is an image of the Globe, uh, the Globe Theater, which was the theater that Shakespeare um, uh, performed, um, Shakespeare's plays were performed in during his lifetime, and uh, there seems to be a wormhole beneath it, uh, the performer descending into the wormhole, which I guess is the uh, effect of the gravity of dark meaning on literary works. Their methods are such as such things as the linguistic entanglement, the fractal technique, which I actually um, well, we'll go to that one because I actually like this one. Uh, Suck toot. I, I don't know what that means. And undercover operations. So. The fractal technique, or fracking, is the simple idea of dark meaning is a powerful tool with which to extract large quantities of actual dark meaning from the universe. It functions like a self-fulfilling prophecy or a self-creating concept that extends into infinity. The idea brings the reality into being. This helps to illustrate the basic principle of the fractal technique, which allows us to apply absolutely anything to itself in order to bring out its hidden essence. For example, one DMRI researcher was tasked with applying a new historicist idea that Shakespeare's work is inseparable from the context in which it was written to itself in such a way as to create a fractal pattern based on the idea of inseparability from history being inseparable from the idea of inseparability, the positive position, while at the exact same time a second researcher applied the same new historicist idea to itself to create a fractal pattern based on the idea of inseparability from history being inseparable from the context in which Stephen Orgel came up with. The negative position. The most interesting result of the experiment was that each researcher ended up observing the other's initial idea in their own pattern, showing that separate ideas about inseparability are, in the, dark, in the realm of dark meaning, inseparable. The researchers also ended up developing a very close friendship as a result of performing the experiments and are now themselves inseparable. The fractal technique divides a thing in itself in order to unite it with itself and create a hitherto unknown wholeness. When the DMRI employs the technique, a subject is divided for love's sake, so the whole process ends up being like Hegelian synthesis, which gives us a brand new thesis on the subject of dark meaning. For more information on this, please see paper number two. Uh, this. Uh, this little fiction here is, is a little convoluted, but basically um, the concept of applying a thing to itself, coming up with a concept, applying it to itself, and see what comes of that. Um, again, they sound so tongue-in-cheek when they talk about these things, but that's actually something that I have done before with, with different ideas, and uh, if you do it to pieces of media, actually, um, I find that pieces of media are often self-referential by what seems to be accident, and that themes found within a, a certain media will either act upon or be represented by uh, something that is on a different meta level of the media, um, I, it's it's. Uh, I don't have a decent way of describing what I mean. Uh, maybe I will work on that and try to develop it into something that I could make an ASMR video about. But um, so whether this is a joke or not, um, it I I think is actually a real thing. Um, the. Uh, the 
the images here, notwithstanding. <laughs> I think there's some real, um, there, there's, there seems to be some sort of actual meat to this writing, this, uh, website that's actually done here, and that, uh, I don't know, uh, check it out. Let me, let me know what you think, if, if you think it's not meant to be taken seriously, um, but then can be taken seriously. After all, that is an example of death of the author and could lead to all sorts of interesting things. Uh, okay, so they that's, uh, that's one of their methods. Um, their undercover operations, they describe a underground laboratory, a cross between a library and a laboratory. Um, again, it's just, they're, they're just clearly, I mean, making stuff up, but, I mean, it's, it's a fiction, um, and fiction, at least according to the Dark Meaning Research Institute, uh, has a lot to it. There's this uh, part at the bottom of the website, I think this is on all the pages, that says, When it was created in 1599, the Globe Theater used the motto, Totus Mundus Ogit Histrionum, which was derived from a 12th century treatise on virtual reality. Uh, I'm, I'm not literary enough to understand what the joke is there. Uh, someone let me know in the comments. So here's the list of their uh, publications, and then they have further reading, which are, uh, uh, looks like they are links to external websites. Um, so if you want to follow this uh, rabbit hole even further, you can do that. Um, And they say to comment them to suggest new areas of research, project ideas, etc. Uh, so I'm going to go into their areas of research and go to the ASMR section. Um, they mentioned, uh, in, in something I read earlier, they mentioned the concept of gorgeousness, and they mention it again here uh, on this page, and it doesn't seem to be beauty that they're referring to, uh, which of course has its own word. Um, I'm not sure if they ever really define what gorgeousness is, but it seems to be like a, a fundamental tenet of their um, assertions. Um, ASMR or entanglement. After several years of service, it was noticed that all the first generation of the DMRI's undercover literary agents were experiencers of autonomous sensory meridian response, the mysterious perceptual phenomenon characterized by a pleasurable tingling sensation in the head, neck, and scalp in response to visual, auditory, tactile, olfactory, and or cognitive stimuli. This apparent coincidence opened up new communication channels, which have played an important role in the DMRI's operations ever since. Instead of greeting one another with secret handshakes and the like, undercover agents can establish connections and communicate crucial information about their missions via actions that seem completely innocuous to other people. No amount of linguistic analysis can shed light on the hidden meaning contained in a sentence when it is used as a carrier for a secret message between DMRI slash ASMR agents. This is because a softly spoken voice, or the smacking of lips during speech, or the sound of fingers running over a crumpled piece of paper on which a red herring memo is written, can ensure that the medium is the message, and as the euphoric tingles begin seeping down the head and neck, that the medium is also the massage, and the massage is the message. Even if someone suspects that something important is being passed on via an ASMR secret handshake, the only way to intercept it is to experience it, which is impossible unless an altruistic bond is established with the agents. 
the ability of ASMR to provide a form of communication that is completely separate from language is seen as hugely significant by all dark-meaning researchers. The substance of the inexplicable experience is pure euphoria, pure meaning, and pure gorgeousness. As it seeps down from the brain and fills the body with bright color, the sensation is nothing but the meaning of itself, the previously dark substance between living beings seen and felt for the first time instead of being read or thought. As well as using ASMR as a tool, the DMRI is working on the assumption that the phenomenon points the way out of language to a bright, warm, and fuzzy future for all human beings, and is therefore attempting to study it in more detail. The tingles currently being experienced by people all over the planet are the first few drops of gorgeousness entering our lives, and the DMRI intends to increase the flow as much as possible. And the illustration here shows uh, two human heads, uh, what seems to be a cross-section, and waves from each of them interacting with waves from the other, and their spinal cords extend downward past a dotted line where they meld into each other and become unified. So this is a pretty interesting take on ASMR, uh, as fanciful as it is, uh, sort of a conspiracy theory slash mysticism. I like that, uh, I mean, no one seems to know exactly what ASMR is, what it's quote-unquote for, and, uh, I've seen just so, so many discussions about where ASMR comes from and why it occurs, and just, as far as I know, nobody has any real idea, but, uh, when there's so much uncertainty about it. Um, I mean, any any theory is plausible, and hey, maybe uh, maybe there's something to this. I don't know. So there's uh, there's some stuff that I didn't uh, that I didn't go to here. Um, so if you would like to check those out, and. See what you think. Um, see if you think that there, there's anything real that they're saying here, or if it's all just uh, kind of vaguely intellectual sounding nonsense pulled together from a whole bunch of different uh, philosophical and literary references. I don't know. Could be. Could be one or the other. So, thank you for joining me, and if you have any suggestions for internet spotlights that you'd like to see, uh, go ahead and suggest them, and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.